Welcome back to another video. Now today I'm heading out with the Sony a7 III, the Sigma 85mm and the Tamron 17-28. to I'm going to be heading to like the Piccadilly area, the Regent Street area. It's going to be dark, possibly some rain with the Christmas lights, so let's go. Welcome back to another POV. So I've just come down from Oxford Street uh, and, well, Oxford Street tube station and I'm walking down Regent Street. I've currently got the 17-28 to on and for Christmas I got the small rig L bracket for my camera and this extension here this grip extension is just the grip i completely never knew i needed having this grip is a massive benefit if i pull the uh this off you can see this grip here i never thought that was it was it's fine i've got generally smaller hands than most people but i never really struggle with that grip but putting this extra grip on here adds a massive difference and just it just feels really good in the hand. Obviously we've got the Piccadilly lights up here so I'm going to try and maybe do an extra slow shutter speed and maybe try and get uh, some, some pretty cool panning shots. Let's have a look at this. So we're at 17 mil. The cat comes down on this bit here and we'll see how much. Yeah you can see we have a lot of the lights, the Piccadilly lights up in the top there. And then we've got enough in the bottom. So we're going to go at 120th. We're going to push the aperture right down to about f 3.5 and we got ISO 400. We're gonna wait for some taxis to come past, some buses, and see what we get with these Piccadilly lights in the back. So bus coming through now, 17 mil. It's a quick one. Right, let's see if we got it. Well, those are pretty clean. The first one and the second one. Yeah, they came out pretty well. So coming back down Regent Street. Actually, gonna come over to the right here. I'm gonna push slightly further up. We got one one hundredth f two point eight ISO thousand. I'm gonna come down here and get that with the leading lines at the bottom, and then a bit of sky at the top. Yeah, those came out well. I could wait for a bus to come and then see if we get a long exposure in the background. So I'll push it down to maybe half a second. And then we'll put up, push the ISO down to 250, push the f-stop up to f7.1, and then we'll wait for a bus. We're all the way at 17 mil, which is, yeah, I mean, you want to have the widest you possibly can for this kind of shot, because otherwise you won't get the sky in at the top of that building. There are buses in the shot, but they're still, they're moving now. Oh, there's another bus coming in, but there's a car. We did actually kind of get that. So I'm gonna come back up to 120 of a second. We're gonna pump the ISO up to about ISO 800, and then we're gonna push the F-stop down to around F4, F3.5, around there. And then we're gonna wait for some good buses to go by, maybe with the angels in the top. Got a cyclist coming through. All right, so we have some Taxi's coming through the shot. Yeah, I can't express how nice having this extra grip actually is, because obviously I thought that that was absolutely fine and I never really had a problem with that, I still don't. But it's kind of that grip that you just never knew you needed. On that note, there is a taxi coming through the shot now. I have a good feeling about that. Oh, that is sharp. That's nice. All right, let's move on. I might check on the 85 mil now, get some more pictures of people, maybe buses, cabs. We'll just see what we get. Let's get the 85 mil out. The wide angle is good down Piccadilly Circus, but when you come down here, the 85 mil does come into its own. Chuck that on. Get this cap on here. Just gonna come across the road here. I'm gonna stand on this corner and look down the long part of Regent Street. There's all the taxis and buses come down here. And when the lights are green, you get some pretty cool shots all the way down here. And there's sometimes people walk across the road as well, which adds another element to the photo. But a huge leading line all the way down when people are walking in there. There we go. Yeah, amazing shot all the way down there. Got 
got a nice the bus is framed nice with the angels so i've checked on the promis filter which is courtesy of jx visions i'll leave his out on the screen and in the description and i'll also leave a link to this filter in the description as well but you can see obviously these lights down here are pretty bright so this primus filter just makes them like fuzzy blurry but you can get some very interesting very different kind of shots Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there, but you can see that the lights basically bloom and they are diffused, as is in the Pro Mist diffusion filter kind of name. All right, let's try and get this bus driver through here. And we got him. Those are nice. And the bigger the light, as you can see with headlights, the Pro Mist filter really kind of diffuses them massively but then I think it works the best when it's kind of small lights and just like mist them up slightly yeah it just adds something different to the shot yeah, it's got lots of people taking a photo with nice lights in the back so let's see if we can get that we look at this person take a photo with what looks like a Canon M50 but I can't be certain so we have a bus coming through the shot here I'm going to crouch down get low have it with the lights in the back I'm actually going to wait for another bus and then use the leading lines down here along the roads leading over there and yeah we have all the Oxford Christmas lights up as well as the lights on the tree lights in the building over there so if we can get a bus coming down from the other side of the road this leading line all the way along it should be a pretty cool shot here we are we have a bus coming now no one is coming nice i'm happy with that <laughs> to the i got chugging a drink oh it's coming it's coming See if we can get it focused on the foam. That was nice. You basically have this um, really cool archway here that leads all the way down the centre. So I'm going to wait for someone to walk across the road on the other side. I might even have someone right now, and there isn't a car. I've got two shots that I am really happy with. That one right there, perfectly in the middle, feet apart. Did require quite a lot of waiting, but managed to get two really nice ones. Oh, we have a Lamborghini Euros here. Get a landscape, which I don't regularly do. So we have a Rolls Royce parked up on the side of the road. So see if we can get any Try and get some detailed shots of it. If we, if it wants to focus, that is tricky with the lighting. Come from this side. What oh, struggling with the focus, but we've got that. Let's move around to the. Oh, let's have a look at the wing mirror. Let me focus on the edge because it doesn't like focusing on the glass. The camera basically really struggles to focus on the wing mirror, so I'm going to manually focus it using the peaking to show the red lines when it's focused, and then get it. Ah, oh, that's really nice. Sharp, a bit of bokeh in the background, in focus. That's nice. Come around to the front. Another badge on the front, see if we get that. Well, the focus point, I uh, often get asked what focus point I'm using. I'm currently using the flexible spot medium size uh, because when I have the wide area, it kind of just tends to sometimes focus wherever and that might not be 
where you want it to be. Whereas sometimes, with, I mean, with the with the medium spot, it can be a problem in terms of sometimes you have to move the spot and you don't have time to move the spot. But quite often, if it's if the spot's in the right place, you always nail the focus first try. So I've come across to the other side of the street. We've got the bend over there, which is definitely underexposed. I've gone back as far as I can, and then when there aren't any cars or people in the shot, see. I'm gonna come over and try and get a front quarter shot of the car, just the front front wheel and the front of the car. And get the front quarter shot there. So we've got a bit of clear space, we're gonna get low down, have it in the bottom third-ish. All right. Do you do pictures, like proper pictures? Uh, yeah, I just, I'm out just doing street photography right now. Do you have an Instagram? I do, yeah. Yes. Wait, that's me at the top. Oh, that one. The bus is in the back. So we just had that person come up to us, ask some photos, and I'm pretty happy with that they came out. I'll send those off to her, edit those up. Yeah, pretty happy with those. So we just found a bar here. Again, we're gonna get some detailed shots of it. Maybe the badge at the back, and then see about the badge at the front. Get some light. Ah, oh, it's clean. Bit of blue in there as well. That's nice. Get the Ferrari logo. And landscape. Push the F stop up to F2.5. ISO 1000 and then a shutter speed of 160. Yeah, Come and get a front shot. Come to the front quarter again. So I'm in this little echoey spot. An 85, a tiny bit too cropped in for this. You have the nice Louis Vuitton bit in the background. The, back, the landscape does work. Come out and try and get a sort of front angle of the car, drawing a lot of attraction. Yeah, I got some pretty nice shots of this Ferrari. So I'm basically going to try and get people as they walk across the road here. Yeah, so as people cross the road here, I'll we'll try and get them. Oh, got him. All right, let's wait for those to buffer. That's another piece of advice as well. Make sure that when you're buying SD cards, you buy one that is fast enough because when you take bursts of photos, there might be 20. If you have a really slow SD card, 20 photos might take 50 seconds to render or a minute sometimes. So the faster the SD card you get, then it means you can take a burst of photos and then possibly within, if you've taken 20 shots within 15 seconds, 10 seconds, you can then keep shooting again. All right, so we've come to St. Moses Street and obviously there are lots of people with their phones out. So I'm gonna try take a photo of someone on their phone and then obviously all the Christmas lights uh, with Oprah in the background. We've come to this spot where these like neon lights are over there. So if we're gonna wait for someone to walk across in the frame and then Try and get them in the middle of the two neon signs. I mean, the closer they are to the walls, the better. So we just got that shot of that woman walk right in front, perfectly in the middle for us, with a bit of editing magic. That will come back out really nicely. I'm happy with that shot. Perfectly framed in the middle. 
got a kind of a landscape shot because we had it was quite wide with the two neon signs yeah we got her perfectly in the middle so i'm heading back to piccadilly circus where i started i put on the 1728 i'm just going to try and get some some panning shots some maybe some low exposures and just finish up there the train leaves uh in about 40 minutes so i want to see what i can get before i have to leave for that but it is still very busy it's kind of eight o'clock around there and yeah it's still extremely busy okay so we're going to bring the settings to 1 20th for now might change a bit later i'm going to bring the iso down to about 640 and the aperture up to about f4 so we got all out of 17 mil the widest we can go which as i said earlier allows the top of the lights to be in and then we just pan with the cars or the taxi in this case and just hold down the shutter button trying to get a shot i am a tiny bit close i might just step back over here just get a better angle and get more front on uh, with the taxi or car whatever it is right we have a bentley coming oh i beg i got that shot if i can get that Again, it's, it's artistic, but it could work. Right, we have a taxi coming. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using the medium spot at the bottom there because I know, I missed the bus, I know that they're gonna come in the bottom third of the shot. If I was to use the points all over, then it might focus on something right up the top up there and then Obviously, it will probably be blurry. Okay, we have a Porsche coming through the shot. You know, the shot of that Porsche actually came out really well. Sharp. It's perfect. Very right, nice. All right, we've got a bus coming through here. Oh, you know what? I am really happy with that shot. It is perfectly sharp at the top of the Piccadilly lights in there. That is good. I'm going to call it a day there. Um, I'm yeah, really happy with the shots I got. And my train leaves in about 20 minutes. So I probably need to rush a bit more than I am. So it was really nice to just have a chilled evening in London. And obviously I picked a bank holiday to go. Uh, so it was extremely busy. And obviously you can imagine... Oxford Street is one of the busiest places in London, so on a bank holiday, yeah, it was hectic. There were tons of people, but I'm still um, very happy with the shots I got, especially this Porsche panning shot. Nailed the focus, it's perfect. The lights were like, it was a nice orange on one side, blue on the other side, yeah. I'm really happy with that shot. Um, probably my favourite shot from that day. I am going to be going through the hashtag, uh, as I mentioned last video. Uh, so let's jump into the hashtag, let's turn on the screen record. If you're not already, hashtag Tom White is the hashtag. I will be featuring it at the end of every video and also I feature it at the weekend, uh, Sunday, which is tomorrow. I'll be featuring my three favourite posts from the last week. So if we come over to the recent section, uh, we have the first shot here from Griff Optics. That's a really nice foggy shot. You've got the nice blue, kind of like dark blue in the buildings and you can't beat a bit of fog in London. All those three shots there. If we scroll down a bit more, we've got this nice cityscape from Robo Racer. Um, not sure if it's like a more sunset or sunrise, but you've got the nice lights from the buildings with Tower Bridge in the back over there. Really like that. Scroll down a bit more. We've got this shot here from Dan Sands. Really nice colours across the buildings there. I really want to try and get some more sunset or sunrise shots, but every time I go to London, it's either like too cloudy that you can't even see the sun coming through. Um, so I've never actually managed to get the sunset, but it's definitely on the list. That's a really nice shot. Um, here we have a shot from IQ Visuals, it's like a kind of double exposure it looks like, but I'm assuming it's sort of the reflection uh, from the glass at the Garden at 120. That's a really nice shot, we've got all the yellow colours, a nice blue at the top, really like that. Scroll down a bit more, we have this shot here from Tadas Visuals, um, absolutely love this shot mate. The framing is perfect on Big Ben, hopefully Big Ben actually... Uh, removes its construction this year, but everyone thought it would happen last year and it didn't happen. But I absolutely love the framing in this shot. If we scroll down a bit more, see what stands out. 
We've got this shot here from Alex Visuals. The colors in this are amazing. You can see you've got the Promis filter, probably on the light, see if you've got it in the, yeah, Tiffin Promis filter uh, on the lights looks really nice. The colors are amazing, the composition is amazing. Um, absolutely love all of these shots. If we come right here, we've got this shot from Ollie Watkins Media. Um, the colors are amazing on this, the classic lookups in the city of London area. If you haven't been to this area, um, I recommend you do go. Scroll down a bit more. We've got this shot here from XPLR Visuals. Incredible portraits, lookups, kind of in the same city of London area. Um, love how you got the foot in the foreground there. Amazing shots. If we scroll down a bit more, maybe do one more shot. See what catches my eye. We've got this shot here from JX Visions. Really nice long exposure on London Bridge with a shard in the background. And then you've also got these super clean shots also at the garden at 120 by the looks of it. Really nice shots, absolutely love those. Um, so I am gonna be reviewing the hashtag at the end of every video and I'm also gonna be reviewing them uh, at the weekends or Sunday, which is tomorrow. So I'll be reviewing my three favorite posts tomorrow on the hashtag. So make sure you're using hashtag Tom White in your posts for a chance to be featured at the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and also maybe found it helpful. Don't forget to use that hashtag and I'll catch you in the next video, peace.